Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I was visiting with Chris for a little while and we had a conversation about batteries and we got into talking about charging and discharging and balancing and then inevitably we got into the topic of parallel versus serial. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between the two and how and when you might use them. All right, before we go any farther in this video, I just want to clarify one thing right now. I know there's a lot of religion on parallel charging, and I'm going to just say right off the bat that I'm not going to react to questions about parallel charging destroying batteries, because I've been parallel charging my batteries for five years, and not one single time would I attribute a battery failure to parallel charging. So to me, parallel charging is about preparing your environment before you start. If you disagree with that, just click stop right now, move on to the next video, and that's fine. Let's just agree to disagree. But I, I'm not going to get into a debate about parallel charging ruining batteries. I just, I just refuse to participate in those types of discussions. I parallel charge. It works for me. I've been doing it for years, and I'm going to continue doing it. Okay, so, so this video is going to be about using batteries in parallel or serial in flight. This is not a video about how to charge or use parallel charging boards, right? So that's, that's, not what, that's not what we're gonna cover today. So this is gonna leave the video and we're not gonna talk about this anymore. What we are gonna talk about is how you can use batteries in different configurations to give you a different result. That's what we're after today. And by the way, this all got started with Chris who got himself a balance checker so he can start monitoring the health of his cells and, and that's what led to this conversation about parallel and serial charging. First things first, let's just talk about the basic structure of parallel versus serial. I'll start with serial first. You guys are used to the idea of you take a flashlight, you take a battery, and you put it in the flashlight. And the positive end goes up, the negative end is up at the bottom. And then you take your next battery, positive end up, negative at the bottom. That's a serial connection. When you do that, what you're, what you're doing is you're connecting positive to negative to positive to negative to positive. So here's a serial connector. This is a retail one that I bought some time ago. But you can see that what we're doing here is we're connecting positive to negative to positive to negative to positive to negative. And it creates a loop. It closes, closes the loop. And when you have a flashlight, all that switch does is it closes the circuit. It closes it. And when you do that, the voltage flows through the battery into the light, and voila, you have light. So that's a serial connection. A parallel connection is a little different. In, in a parallel, the best way to show that is that you're connecting both the positives together. In this case, two batteries in parallel both the positives together and both of the negatives together. All right, so in parallel, the positives, the reds go together and the blacks go together. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with the voltmeter how this plays out in flight and why it would matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my voltmeter. I'm just going to connect positive, negative. I'm just going to connect my positive lead. And by the way, Chris is here, and he's, he, he might pop in with a few questions from time to time, um, but he's visiting while we make this video. All right, so positive and negative go in, and you can see this battery, 11.82 volts, all right? So that's battery, and I still have my label, that's battery number four. All right, here's battery number two, 11.82 volts, okay? So both of these batteries have the same overall pack voltage, all right? Now, when I connect them in parallel, all I'm doing is connecting the negative, right here, and the positive together. So I have two negatives connected and two positives connected, and their output is on this, on this output plug. So all I'm going to do now is plug my meter in and show you if I can get myself unwound here. Don't cross your wires here. You won't like what happens if you do. And there you go. 11.82. So that is a parallel connection. I've got two batteries, both the blacks, both the reds connected. The voltage stays the same. That's the key about parallel. When you connect batteries in parallel, your voltage doesn't change. Now here are the rules for parallel. So rule number one, batteries in parallel need to have the same voltage, which by the way is the root of all evil in the discussion of whether or not you should use batteries in parallel. That's the basis of it. But if everything's even, 
then you can do it. Rule number two, they can have different capacities. You can connect, and I'll, why, rather than talk about it, I'm gonna show you. Okay, here's a three cell 5,000, all right? Now watch, first thing before I do it, I'm gonna check the voltage. I should have done that before I started babbling about it. Ah, uh 11.82, -huh, that's good maintenance. Okay, 11.82, so now I'm gonna plug this in, and look, no sparks, no smoke. Right? Nothing's blowing up. Nothing's getting warm. It doesn't damage anything. Right? It's okay to do this. So when you put two batteries in parallel together that are the same voltage, what you're doing is combining the milliamp hour capacity of the pack. So this is no longer a 2.2 and a 5.2. This is a 7.4 amp hour battery or a 7400 milliamp hour battery. That's what this is. This is a 7400 pack when it's connected like that. So the gas tank on this plane, if I flew like this, is 7400 milliamps. All right, that makes sense? Yeah. How do you know if you, the volts are different? With the voltmeter check. Okay, you have to check it with the voltmeter. Or, okay. or your charger. Okay. You know, you can use your charger, put them on there and, and see. Or if you have a balance checker, you can see with that. Any, anything that'll read volts to you, you okay. can use. I use my charger. So, or, or I'll use my, uh, this guy, I'll use my, this is the. So I can use my new gadget. Yeah, right. you can use your new gadget. You can plug that in and let's take a look. Let's just do it. So we plug this guy in, three, three point, uh, let's see the overall voltage, 11.81. And this one says 11.8182. .81, Little fluctuation, but it's there. Okay. So since the volts are same, I can run them in parallel. in parallel. That's right. And when you do that, you get more weight, but you also get more capacity. So if I needed a 7,400 milliamp hour pack, there it is. I've got it. And listen, it's another one that people are going to say, well, if you do that, then the, the 2,200 runs out first. No, it doesn't. That's not the way parallel works. They'll both drain equally. They'll both drain equally. Co they'll both hit 3.75 at the same time when they're connected like this. That's pretty neat. It's the way it works. These are rules of physics. This is not John making stuff up. All right? Okay, that's parallel. So we've done that. Now, now let's take a look at series. So in a series connection, I'll set this stuff aside. And in a series connection, what you're doing is you're... So in parallel, we're adding capacity together. We're adding milliamp hour capacity together to get a bigger gas tank. In series, the capacity stays the same. So I have two 2200 batteries, two 2200 milliamp hour batteries, and they're both at 11.82 volts, okay? Now, when I connect these batteries in series, the, the capacity, the 2200, they're still 2200, but it's gonna be 24 volts. It's gonna basically be a six cell. And for comparison, let's look at a six cell. So here's a six cell battery, All right? 22.87 on a six cell pack, that's a six cell. You guys already saw me measure these with the, with the multimeter, so I'm not gonna do that again, but I'm gonna connect the series connector. So all you do is follow the shapes. Don't worry about the colors on this one, you follow the shapes. All right, so this one connects two in series. Now I've got my series connector on there. Now watch what happens. No smoke, no fire, no sparks. We connected, and think about what just happened. We connected positive to negative, right? That's series, that's what series does, okay? Now, if we connect our meter to the output lead, what was the other one? 22.87, right? 23.63. So in this case, we've taken two three cell packs and we put them together in series. So what did that do for us? What that does is it gives you a six cell battery. That is now a six cell battery, right? You can't look at this. Like if I took this and shrink wrapped it and, and handed it to you just like that and you didn't know it was two different packs, you'd say, what is that? I'd say it's a 2200 six cell battery. That's what it is. That makes sense? All right, so what do you get out of this and why would you do this? The reason you do this is, let's say that you had a build configuration that required a 6L2200. Well, I don't want to go out and buy a 6L2200 because if I only have one plane that uses a 6L2200, I don't want to waste the money and have a single battery for a single plane. All of my battery configurations are designed to give me the ability to use them in multiple planes. So I try and limit the configurations of batteries I have, and I'm willing to use techniques like series and parallel in order to do that.
I flew the Escapade like that for a very long time. Two, two 2200s in, uh, two 2200 four cells in parallel. Go ahead. Do you find a big difference in the weight? Usually the way out, approximately the same. Almost identical. And the reason is because a six cell pack is a six cell pack is a six cell pack. So if you want a, a gas tank that's 2200 milliamps and you want six cells, it's gonna be that big. It's gotta be. Have you run into problems where it wouldn't fit in a plane when you do that? No, if the plane calls for it, like the, the Escapade called for a, a four cell 4,000, or I think it was a 36 to 4,000. When I ran my two four cells in parallel, slid right in. Because again, there's no mystery in capacity, right? A 2200 is a 2200 is a 2200. When you start multiplying it out by cells, then th there's, there's, no, there's no magic formula that says just because it's a 6L2200 that it's gonna be smaller than that because that's what this is. If they made a 6L2200, this is what they do. And then they'd wrap it all together and they give you one output. That's it. Okay, now let's get into the rules for serial, okay? In serial, the voltage is additive. So you, what you do not want to do is you do not want to run two different capacity serial packs together. So what I wouldn't do is I would not run a 5,000 milliamp hour pack and a, f a 2,200 milliamp hour pack in series together because if you do that, this one will die faster. This one will keep going, but you'll kill this battery in the process, which is bad. So when you run in series, you have to use the same capacity. They have to be the same milliamp hour packs. Now that said, I wouldn't have any problems connecting this six cell and this six cell in series electrically. Electrically, that's not a problem. You can do that, no big deal, because in series, voltage is additive. So here's, here's another example. Let me just show you another example. You would not do this in parallel, guys. Do not do this in parallel. If you do this in parallel, you're going to see sparks and not be happy. Okay. All right, in this case, I have a 2200 three cell and a 2200 four cell. Do not connect those in parallel. You'll get sparks. In series, it's okay because they're both 2200s and in series, the voltage is additive. So in this case, I'm gonna get, here, let's just prove the point. So we're not talking in mysteries or dogma. So 15.4, okay, 15.4 on the four cell, 11.82, so 27 volts. That's what we got, okay? So now we're gonna connect these in serial. Don't do this in parallel. <laughs> Don't do it in parallel. If you do, I disavow any responsibility because you're not listening. Okay, these are in serial. So I have a four cell and a three cell in serial. And remember, serial's additive. Look, no sparks, no heat. I just connected a four cell and a three cell together. No problem. What did I get out of this? They're both 2200 milliamp hour packs, but what did I get? I got a four cell and a, t and a three cell. So now I now have a seven cell battery. That's what I have. It was 11 and 15, 27. There you, there you go. 27 volts. No heat. Chris, touch it. Touch it. Any heat coming off that? No, no sparks. No sparks, no heat, no it's damage. Fine. It's fine. Let's recap the rules for serial. In serial, you can mix and match your voltages. That's okay. I could plug a one cell battery into this as long as it's 2200. By the way, electrically speaking, I could plug a one cell 10,000 into this and it wouldn't matter as long as I don't fly it that way because the 10,000 will way outlast the 1,000, right? It'll kill the 1,000 to do that. So in series, you can mix and match your voltages. The voltages are additive. So if you need to go from a three cell to a six cell, you do that in series. And don't mix up your capacities. Your capacities need to be the same because a bigger capacity will outlast a smaller capacity when you have them connected in series. All right, that's all I've got on this topic. I hope that's been helpful. Chris has Something he Can you wants give me to. an application that you would use series on? Series would be the jet. Like if I wanted, if I wanted to go with a 6L 2200, uh, I would take two 2200 batteries and connect them in series. Now I have a 6L 2200. Okay, got it. Thank right? You. Here's, another, here's another one. When I used to fly long range FPV, I used to take two of these together and put them in parallel. So I would take these two batteries. I don't want to do it. You, I, never, I never connect in parallel without checking voltage. That's dangerous. 
So 15.28, and I think one's going to be higher because I use it. 15.28, oh, 15.27, how about that? Okay. Now what should that voltage be? I just connected them in parallel. What should it be? The individuals are 15.28. So what should it be? 15.28. In parallel, the voltage That's doesn't change. Right. Right. Voltage doesn't change. 15.28. So the voltage stays the same, but my gas tank just went from 10,000 milliamps to 20. If I had an airplane, which I do, that could fly this battery setup, I got a 20,000 milliamp hour battery right there. Good? Good. Clear as, this is a good reference video, right? So if yes. you ever want, you can come back to it I'm and go. I want to actually watch this again. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, wait till we get the words in and you'll see the rules. I'll put the rules in a nice little format. And you'll, you'll be able to say, I'm going to freeze frame that, capture the picture, and put it on, my, you know, on your hard drive and save that for reference. But there you go, guys. There's an example. There are a couple of examples and use cases on why you'd want to use batteries in parallel versus batteries in series and why it makes sense and why it's okay. You, you have, the thing I need to stress about this is that you have the video evidence. <laughs> there's, this is, there's no black magic going on here, right? I'm not trying to, there's no trickery with the camera. I have a witness that watched the whole thing. This is just the way electricity works. So if you want a bigger gas tank, you can put two batteries in parallel. If you want, the same size gas tank with more power, you put two batteries in series. That's it. That's, 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 that's the bottom line. All right. Hey, if you enjoyed this content, I would definitely appreciate your subscription. If you are a subscriber, hit that notification bell. Keep the comments coming. Talk to your friends. Tell them about RC Video Reviews. And uh, keep coming back for more. Take it easy. Hope you enjoyed the video.